Welcome to the TTT News Special. I'm DK Rosta. Albert Einstein said that play is the highest form of research. And we are diving down that rabbit hole of play as an efficient tool for building capacity with country manager of Wisdom CRM, Dane Aguilera, and the program coordinator, Joel Bajnath. Good day, gentlemen. Thank you for, being, for making the time. And I want to start off with you, please, uh, country manager, Dane Aguilera, in terms of giving an overview of Wisdom CRM stock trading program. Morning, DK, and uh, thanks for having us here this this, this morning. Um, so the Wisdom CRM um, stock market virtual game is an interactive simulation of the U.S. stock exchange. All right, it is designed and developed to promote the understanding of the stock market, its operations, the benefits, and how it works to help students develop uh, critical thinking skills as well as to achieve their personal development goals. So what the, what, what, what the competition, it's really, it's really a competition and it provides real-time stock market data from all the US stock exchanges. And each student will start off with $100,000 US of virtual money. And it will also include lesson plans, quizzes, and real-time news um, from Forbes inside of the platform. It will also provide a summary page showing the top students and the most profitable trades in the platform. So I don't know if uh, Mr. Pajnath want to explain further um, on this. And even well, if thank you, good day all. Um, yes, it displays the trades, but um, as indicated, it's an educational program. It's not just as it may sound and it may imply just a stock exchange. It, it opens the student to more than that. It gives them insights in the relevant companies. It, help, it helps them to be financially independent, viable. It, it's all about financial literacy. It assists the student in planning for the future. So when the student comes out of school, they would learn about budgeting, about financial planning about being financially independent. Also, it will create also avenues for it to invest wisely. And in this day and age where we see that um, job security because of pandemics are uh, somewhat questionable, it assists in providing a nest egg, especially locally with our NIS system, which is somewhat uh, on the fire these days. Um, it provides an avenue for people leaving school and starting work or children to put something in place so that they will have a future to lean back on or to depend on beside a normal working salary. So this system is, it's a great educational system for the individuals and also it's a way, practical way of preparing them for the future and for the working world out there. So even before we speak a little further about the competition itself, uh, Dane, I want to go back to you, get, getting an idea of the history, please, because is this something that was uh, thought about, started in Trinidad and Tobago? What is the history of Wisdom CRM? Right. So basically, what we, how, how we basically came up with this idea is we saw this system replicated in different countries. So Jamaica being one, uh, the US, Canada, and Australia. And we thought to ourselves, um, okay, why not let's introduce it to our kids here in China today. So what we did is that we designed the platform. And we took out all the technicalities out of trading and stocks, and the US exchanges. And we just made it simple, simple for a student, a teenager so that they can understand. So let's take, for instance, the tickers. We took the ticker, we made it a little bigger, uh, we put some other cartoon characters, you know, we animated the system to make it fun and enjoyable for students. So, yes, it has been done in other territories. And we're just here to introduce it to Trinidad and Tobago. And as well, um, we plan to expand to the wider Caribbean as well in other schools. Joel, anything you want to add there? No, and, and that's, that's quite correct. Um, when we introduced the program to Trinidad, um, we also went to the Sister Isle, Tobago, and Tobago accepted the program with open arms. 
thanks to the, the, the education officers across there, Mrs. Hackett, they accepted the program with open arms. And together with some board schools in Trinidad, we have 17 schools registered as um, the first ones to, to look at the program. And come January, it will be rolled out to the wider community because we are making every effort and the ministry has contacted us. And um, by January, it should have a much larger audience in Trinidad and Tobago. And just before we get to that audience, and I want to stay with you for a moment, please, Joel, uh, because you spoke about financial literacy. Now, this is important, but what's the significance of early financial literacy in terms of as opposed to saying, okay, well, you come out of school, you start to work, and now this is something that you're thinking about. What's the significance of doing that while you are still a student at a young age? Okay, and I just want to draw reference to Trinidad and Tobago and the Flip Deco um, court in Point Lisas. Um, I had just started to work. Um, I was fresh out of school. And um, a friend of mine who was involved in these things, he advised me, hey, buy some shares on Flip Deco. And we all know where that went, that soon multiplied and became a big earner. Now, had I known about investing while I was going to school, when I came out of school and I started working, I would have had a much wider opportunity or much greater opportunity, I should say, to put my financial income to, to greater use. And like my dad always said, the more money you have in hand, it can um, easily finish. But if you have it invested somewhere, then you are sure in one day that return will come. This program helps the children virtually, without any losses or consequence, learn and develop those skills. And it goes more than just investing. Eh? There's a lot more. So as we go on, I'd give you the, the much more benefits that this program has. All right. Now, I like the fact that you're talking about uh, the risk and you spoke to the risk a little bit, and I'll take and I'll, I'll throw it to you, please, Dane. In terms of like what risks are there? Uh, because I hear stocks, I say, okay, well, that's something to be looking at a little warily. But also the fact that you say you want to involve children, students into a game like this, into a program like this, is this does this raise the opportunity for? information to get out there in a manner that you don't want it to. Uh, have you all looked at those factors? What's the safety issues? What are the risk factors? And how have you all addressed them? Right. OK, so, so Dickie, it's, it's a virtual environment, right? So there's no risk involved at all to the students here. Um, regarding the, the, the question about uh, information about students being out there, the only thing we ask of the student is the name and the email address. And that information is encrypted on our system. So we are pretty sure that the student's data is not gonna be in the hands of other people uh, because of our encrypted system, all right? And we just wanna stress on the fact that this is um, virtual. So there's no, there's no um, risk involved, right? Um, so, so yeah, I hope that would answer your question there. All right, but we'll get dive back into the conversation. When we return from the break, we are speaking with Dane Aguilera, the country manager, as well as the program coordinator, Joel Badnath, about the Wisdom Stock Trading Program. Stay with us. We'll return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with Dane Aguilera and Joel Badnath about the Wisdom CRM Stock Market Program or Stock Trading Program. And Joel, I want to start restart this segment with you, please. In terms of the educational aspects of this program and how, what, it, what is it that people learn about investing, trading, stocks because of this program? Well, so... Um it gives them it gives them a fine an opportunity to prepare themselves to be more financially literate in the real world it gives them an opportunity to budget give them opportunity to plan to 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 realize what is important and what is not um many a times we come out there we work we we, we work for a salary and when we come out the, the way we utilize our, our our monetary gains does is not much beneficial in some cases. And you tend to realize that later on in life, hey, we could have done this different. 
this, this program creates that ability in the child, in the individuals, to be much more prepared financially so that they will be more financially stable in the future. And mind you, it's not just about the stock exchange. Um, I went, I presently have the dashboard open on the program and I just clicked on Apple. And if you see the type of activities that Apple is involved in, when a student exposes himself to these different services and these different programs and these different um, products that Apple produce, it's a whole new career guidance. So no longer when the secondary school has this guidance workshop where the university comes and tell them, hey, these are career out there for you relevant to your program. It's a whole different ballpark. You'll realize it's, it's about 80% more career opportunity there for the students. So it opens them to a new line of work, a new line of reality where they can branch off from their relevant fields after they have finished secondary school, and they are just open to a wonderful world of career. And I, and I appreciate that because many times uh, thinking about a career, thinking about what you can do and tying that into what you have at this point in time is very instructive to be able to see ripple off effects, uh, what can happen down the road, how you can get to where you want to be and those incremental steps. But just to, just to make sure though, uh, because Dane spoke about it being virtual, is it that you are able to interact with these things, but you're not able to do so directly? So the money that you have stays there, even though you start off with a, I, I don't necessarily want to call it play money, but explain that interaction between the game itself and the real stock market, please. All right. Okay. Um, sorry, Mr. Aguilera. All right, so basically, um, these, are the, these are the companies, right, that would shape our lives right now. So companies like Facebook, Microsoft, Instagram. So these are the companies that the students are actually going to learn about because they're going to have quizzes on these companies. And the virtual money, which is 100,000 US, right, it is virtual, so it is just there on the system, and the student can buy and sell as they please. Now, the, the money stays in the system. It's not, it's not like the student is going to have access to it or they're going to get this at the end of the competition. No, it, it is virtual money and it is a real time data of what is actually happening in the stock market. So the, the data feed that they're going to get is what is actually going on in the market right now. So and that, that is what it is, basically. All right, thank you much. And, and if, we keep... if, I, if, if I may support that. Come, please. Yeah, if, if I may support that, it's, it's real-time data, yes. It's virtual, it's risk-free. It's risk-free. Um, the, the individual data are protected. And at the end of the day, you would see real-time data. And in the program itself, at the top of the, the, the screen, when, when you're getting to the program, you will see the, just like the real stock exchange, you will see the, the different commodities scrolling out, scrolling across your screen um, with the ups and downs, the highs, the lows. And also you have access to Forbes magazine. You have access to Forbes, sorry, Forbes. We say magazine because I'm from way back then when it was only a magazine. But now you have real time access to Forbes. If it changes in Forbes, it's reflected in this virtual data. So the children has real-time data, real, real-time data. Now, we've spoken about the game, huh? but in terms of the start, how do, when does it start? Who is eligible? How does one engage? How does one become a part of it? Uh, I, I, you spoke about the education officers, specifically in Tobago. Who needs to contact you to be a part of this? And when does it start? Okay, Joel. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Tobago was a choice and they took it running. It was wonderful. Ministry of Education in Trinidad also. Um, they contacted they contacted Mr. Aguilera on a public holiday and they were interested. They they they, are, they wanted this thing to um to take place. Um and even today, for me thing, um there will be a meeting scheduled. There's a meeting scheduled where we'd be explaining certain 
aspects of the program that the ministry specifically asks for. And so at January, everyone will be on board. Um, to get into the program, schools would have to pre-register. Um, that's what these 17 schools did. They pre-registered. After that, there are administrative procedures to follow. And we are hoping on the 9th, the 10th of August to officially rule it out. So that come September, you know, everything will be in gear, in gear for the schools and things like that. But Trinidad and Tobago Ministry, they are fascinated also. And we hope to give them a good presentation to satisfy their desire later. And in terms of targeting schools, in terms of targeting individuals to be a part of this program, a part of this game, this competition, who are you looking for? Is it that it is open to secondary school students alone, tertiary, primary, you're talking about getting people immersed at a young age. So what is the ideal group or target that you, that you have in mind? Right. So the, the ideal target is secondary schools. Um, <clears throat> the age group that we target in will be from form three to form six, right? Um, so far, we have schools from the Tobago that fall under the Tobago House of Assembly. We have schools that fall under the Catholic Education Board, the Presbyterian School Board, as well as the Anglican School Board. So those are the schools that are already registered on the system. And those are the 17 schools that are. So schools need to pre-register first, right, before they can jump on board. And then the students of those schools will be able to pass on the case. And All right, Joel? And, yeah, and, um, and that's it. Um, presently, we have ongoing um, schools of the 70 school that had pre-registered. Presently, we have the administrators in the schools um, doing their registration process where they are being open to the platform. Any questions they have, they would be explained. And there are certain procedures that needs to be followed before it's rolled out to the student population. And presently, that has been put in place. And that is how this system is. There's a procedure where we, we do things so that to ensure everything rolls out smoothly. And that is what is going on right now. Well, you just answered one of the questions that I wanted to ask in terms of the administrators, educators. Uh, is there a level of capacity building that is needed before they are able to uh, deal with the students for this? So I'll, I'll give you the chance to elaborate on that a little more, but I'll also ask what kind of devices are needed to operate the system? Right, so right now the administrators are on board and they're testing the platform and we're going to give them the whole month of August to do that. All the administrators in all of the secondary schools, as well as they're going to show the, the teachers who need to be involved in the program, right? Um, the devices that they spoke about, it can be used on laptops, tablets, or even cell phones. So the program is compatible for all three devices. All right, great. And finally, Joel, I want to ask you contact information, please, because yes, you're saying that you're in contact with some people already, but folks who still want to get into contact with you, how do they do that? Um, there's the website. There's also uh, emails that have been going out to the relevant institutions with all the contact names, all the email address, all the phone numbers. So they are readily ac accessible to any individual from the relevant schools or even from the public in the administrative part of the, the education to, to contact us and, and get information on the program. All right, and I believe and, that uh, website is wisdomcrm.com. Wisdom with a Z, so that's wisdomcrm.com. Am I correct, gentlemen? Mr. Aguilar. Um, the email will be education at wisdomcrm.com. So they can reach out to us via that email address. All right. And I just want to elaborate on another, another topic that I probably missed. Um, we said prizes are going to be given out to students. Yes. So the top three students in each school is going to get a prize at the end of the competition. All right. And also, 5% of our proceeds is going to go back into purchasing devices for these students who took part in the competition as well. All and right. We so with, and with, with that, gentlemen, we want to thank you so much for actually coming on board, giving us an idea, whetting our appetites, as it were. If in, individuals want more information, 
education at wisdomcrm.com. That wisdom is with a Z. Thank you very much, Joel Bajna. Thank you very much, Dane Aguilera. And we want to thank you on behalf of the entire news team for tuning in to the TTT News Special.